Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you about one of the most important laws in physics, the Ohm's law. But before I do that, I have to tell you about the resistance. Imagine a piece of wire connected to a battery or to a cell. The current goes from plus to minus. So the red arrows indicate the direction of conventional current. Conventional because the arrows show the direction of positive charges. But the positive charges do not move. We know that it's the electrons that flow and the electrons are negative. So the electrons go anticlockwise. So we indicate with blue arrows the direction of electron flow and with the red arrows the direction of conventional current. The resistance is a measure of how hard it is for the electrons to go through the wire. The bigger the resistance, the harder it is. Resistance is defined as, for one wire or for one element, it could be a lamp, as voltage divided by the current. The resistance is measured in ohms. So, the symbol for ohm is the Greek letter omega. And since resistance is voltage divided by current, voltage is volt divided by current, which is ampere. I would also like to tell you about the difference between a conductor and an insulator. Well, we know that conductors conduct electricity, insulators don't. But why? You see, everything consists of atoms. Atoms have a positively charged nucleus and a negatively charged electrons, which rotate around the nucleus. In an insulator, all electrons rotate around the nucleus. But in a conductor, the electrons rotate around the nucleus, but not all of them. Some of them are called free. They're not tied to the atom. So conductor contains free electrons. And when you connect a battery to a conductor, which is positive and negative, these free electrons, which are negatively charged, they rush towards the positive, positive terminal of the battery. And that's the difference between insulator and conductor. In an insulator, all the electrons are tied to the atom and in the conductor some of them are free. The amount of free electrons determines the conductivity. So insulators have a very high resistance and conductors have very low resistance. And now the Ohm's law, what we came for. So the Ohm's law looks pretty simple. It looks like this. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. What it says here that the current is directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. The Ohm's law is for one element. For example, a lamp. Let's say we have a lamp. There's current flowing through the lamp, current I. The resistance on the lamp is R. Therefore, we can find the voltage on this lamp. We rearrange this formula to get voltage. Voltage equals IR. So, if a current of 3 amps flows through a lamp of resistance 2 ohms, we can find the voltage. The voltage would be 3 times 2, 6 volts. The Ohm's law allows rearrangement. So. If you want to find the current, you use this formula. If you want to find the resistance, you rearrange it to get a uh, voltage divided by current. And of course, if you want voltage, you multiply current by resistance. I would say that this is the most commonly used formula for the Ohm's law. Let's build a simple circuit. In this circuit, we have a variable power supply. That is, the voltage can be altered. We have an ammeter which measures the current through this resistor and the voltmeter measures the voltage on the resistor. Now, if we change the voltage on the power supply, that will change the current through the circuit and that will change the current through the resistor. 
if we build a graph of voltage versus current for this resistor, it would look like this. That is because V equals IR. Voltage is proportional to the current, given that the resistance is constant. So voltage equals IR. So we can simply say that the gradient of this graph is equal to resistance. That's it. This is a simple technique to determine the resistance of a resistor. When a conductor behaves like this, we call it an ohmic conductor. That is because it obeys the Ohm's law. That is because the gradient is constant. And that means that the resistance is constant. This is true for most resistors. But if we replace the resistor with a simple filament lamp, we would see a different picture. As the current increases in the lamp, the temperature of the filament increases. And when the temperature of a conductor increases, the atoms start to wobble about, making it hard for the electrons to pass through. That means that the resistance increases. On the graph, it would look like this. If we build a voltage current graph for a filament lamp, we would see something like that. When the current is small, the lamp is cold, and the resistance is not very big, because the resistance is the gradient. But as the current increases, the lamp becomes hotter, and the gradient increases. So this is a graph for a filament lamp. And since the filament lamp does not obey the Ohm's law in the sense that the resistance is not constant, that means that the voltage is not proportional to the current. We call it a non-ohmic conductor. Non-ohmic conductor. Let's consider a simple series circuit. A series circuit is where the elements are connected one after the other. The most important feature for a series circuit is that the current in every element is the same. So the current here, the current here, the current here, 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 everywhere current is the same. What's for the voltage? The voltage splits. If we have a 5 volt battery, that means it gives 5 joules for each coulomb of charge, and 3 volts are lost here, that simply means that the voltage on this resistor is 2 volts. 2 and 3 make 5. What's for the current? To find the current, let's look at this element. Let, we use the Ohm's law. Current is directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance, V divided by R. So it's 2 divided by 40. That gives us 0 0.05 amps or amperes. Let's look at this. Current equals voltage divided by resistance. Once again, so 3 volts divided by 60 ohms. And that's once again 0 0.05 amps. So you see, in a series circuit, the current is the same. And the voltages add up to the EMF. So EMF is 5. And the total voltage is also 5. Now let's look at a simple parallel circuit. Parallel circuit is when the elements are connected in parallel to each other. In this case, the voltage on each element is equal to the voltage on the battery. That is EMF, which is 6 volts. 
The current, on the other hand, splits. The current here is equal to the I1 plus I2. So I3 is I1 plus I2. Let's find I1 and I2. For this, we use the Ohm's law. So I1 is simply V1 divided by R1. And that is 6 divided by 10. So 0 0.6 amps or amperes. So I1 is 0 0.6. To find I2, we use the same formula. A2 is uh, V2 divided by R2, which gives us 6 divided by 20, and that is 0 0.3 amps. So I2 is 0 0.3. Well, and that, of course, means if the current splits, we know that I3 is I1 plus I2, so that's 0 0.9 amps. To learn more about the ampere and the volt, you can watch my previous video. Here it is. Thank you, goodbye.